Thank you. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, that's pretty good. How many coffin fellows do we have in the room? Give me a whoop. Raise your hand. All right. Um, my name is Jeff Harbach, and I'm the CEO of Coffin Fellows. We are a global network of VCs. We're about 600 fellows across 46 different countries and six different continents. And what I'd like to share with you today is a lot of what Christine shared with you, which is our view of the world and our view of what the role that uh, venture plays in the global economy. And so when we think about venture capital, we think about it pretty simply. We say that venture capital is visionary people trying to do the seemingly impossible, uh, pursuing innovative ideas that are supported by visionary capital to ultimately change the world and also hopefully get uh, returns for your LPs and for your investors. But how do you do this? There's lots of different ways, there's lots of different methods. We think about the how in Coffin Fellows. So I think it's helpful to kind of take a step back and say, how did this start? If we go back to the beginning of venture capital, we might say that it started back when there were shipping routes being, trying to be found and formed all across the world. So picture yourself as the king of Spain the year is 1517, and a man named Ferdinand Magellan walks into your office, or your, your office, <laughs> and says, hey, I have this crazy idea. I want, to, I want you to finance a couple ships so that I can go sail and find new shipping routes all across the world. The risks are high. The ship might sink. We might get captured by pirates. Or frankly, the king of Spain might be thinking, you know what, they might just find exactly what they're looking for and stay there and never come back. But the rewards, new discoveries, new shipping routes, things that will change the world. Then you fast forward to modern times, 1946. This is, uh, this is a picture of George Doriot, who is commonly known as the, or the father of venture capital. This is, he founded the American Research and Development Corporation. And what they're doing here is they're saying, we need to support visionary technologies, supporting visionary people, to build um, new solutions to rebuild a country after post-World War II. Big, big ideas. Then you fast forward to today, where a guy named Andres Foyak walks into your office. Andres is a coffin fellow. And he says, I have this vision where animal products are animal free. Now again, the risks are high, but the rewards innumerable. These are the people that we back. Now, as you think about this, innovative ideas and visionary people, frankly, are a dime a dozen. They're happening, it's happening more and more these days. So much so that many, much of the world thinks that this is venture capital. <laughs> and so they bring in ideas and they, they pitch to sharks and this is what our industry, by most of the, the world, is viewed as. But are these the people we support? Are these the people that we celebrate? Or, are these, or is it these people? These are the men and women in the arena with the blood, sweat, and tears thinking about how they can make the world a better place. They are visionary people supporting and following and being passionate about a visionary dream. These are the people that we celebrate. This is why everybody in this room is here today. And there's a man named Ewing Marion Kaufman who supported this vision. He was an entrepreneur himself. He built and sold a company called Marion Labs. He sold it to Dow Chemical and became a very wealthy man and said, you know what? I want to take a portion of these proceeds and I want to put it towards supporting a foundation that is going to build up entrepreneurs and build up education all over the world. And he did exactly that. In fact, he says that entrepreneurs best express the human spirit. They are the ones that are driving economies. They are the ones that best express human potential in the world. He was a visionary, and so he did that, and he started the Coffin Fellows Program. So I'm gonna share with you some of the things that we think about uh, over these, these next couple of minutes. One of them is this. So this is a, a graph that shows GEI versus GDP. So you have GEI, or the Global Entrepreneurship Index, on the x-axis, and you have GDP per capita on the y-axis. And what this shows is a very strong correlation, actually in our square root of about 0.6, where there is a very strong correlation between the levels of entrepreneurship in a country and GDP in a country. Now, the way that you measure GEI are things like number of entrepreneurs in a country, quality of entrepreneurs in a country, 
Number of, um, availability of risk capital, availability of talent, lots and lots of ways to measure GEI, but the, the story here is that truly entrepreneurship drives GDP. Another way to look at this is this is in the US. We know that uh, in the US, all net new job creation essentially comes from companies zero to five years of age. In fact, companies six years and beyond are actually net destroyers of jobs. So it is, it is the entrepreneurs, it is the startups, the zero to five year uh, old companies that are driving economies and driving job growth. One more way we look at this, which we think is really interesting, is that if just a 10% lift in the support systems for entrepreneurs across the globe would add 22 trillion to global GDP. And you can see how that compares to the other GDPs listed there. Huge, huge potential. Now, Coffin Fellows, we've been here since 1995. We were formed by the Coffin Foundation in 95. And we've seen a lot happen over the, you know, in the last 23 years. You know, we, we've seen kind of the, the growth of internet users. We've seen uh, more capital being deployed across the US um, and across the globe. And what we really want to focus on is it is being deployed across the globe. In fact, as you look at this, you can see that there's obviously the tech bubble in 2000, 2001, but since 2014, we've been de deploying more capital uh, across, the, um, across sectors and across geographies in venture. And you can also see that it's a, more, it's a much more healthy environment than it was back in 2000. In 2000, it was primarily US. Now it's very much split between other geographies around the world. Bottom line, if you're not looking uh, inside the US and outside the US, you are missing half of what's going on in venture across the world. This is a global uh, industry. And so you, if you look at this, another way to look at this is in 2000, uh, it was the US that led global venture. But then in 2012, it shrunk to about 67%. And now today, the US is actually less than half of global venture uh, around the world. It's a staggering statistic. But then some people might say, okay, great. Capital is being deployed all over the world. What about returns? Well, returns actually follow a similar curve as they do in the US. You still get the same type of general returns in um, whether in you're in China or Asia or Europe or the US. You're still getting about 7% of companies that are giving the 10x returns, the ones that are really what we are as venture investors are hoping to either invest in or, or help the companies that we invest in grow into be. So if, global, if venture is global and returns are there, then the message is we need to be looking, we need to be aware of what's going around all over the world. And that's the magic of today because you're going to hear a lot of different perspectives around, from 500 startups and their speakers and panelists around what's going on around venture in all different forms of ecosystems all over the world. Now, when we think about this from a Coffin Fellows perspective, we think that to support entrepreneurs, we use this phrase called smart connected capital. And what that really means is smart connected investors. And the way that we describe that is we use some of these key character traits. We think that this is the raw, these are the raw materials to build up the best investors in the world. Now, you can look at these traits and you can say, that seems like a good list of traits. Frankly, those are the traits that I look for in my entrepreneurs that I back. Yep, that's right. But the entrepreneurs should not be the only ones that, that hold these character traits. These have to be held by the, entrepreneur, or by the investors that support those entrepreneurs. These are the raw materials that we work with to build up the uh, entrepreneur or the investors to be the best versions of themselves so that they can support the entrepreneurs they invest in. Because here's the reality. 65% of businesses fail because of the human dynamic in the business. 65% of businesses fail because of the human dynamic of the business. If you've been investing for more than a couple years, I'm sure you've seen this in the entrepreneurs that you've backed or in the teams that you've backed. Doesn't mean they're bad people just means that this is just reality. Building a business is hard work. And there's lots of different things that go into it. In fact, the entrepreneur, really what we're looking for, we hear a lot, product market fit. We want an entrepreneur that finds product market fit. Awesome. But guess what? There's a whole lot more things that go into building a company. There's all this other stuff. There's boards, and there's vision, and there's talent, and there's customers, and there's net. When's the last time you've met an entrepreneur, uh, first time founder that says, boy, I cannot wait for my first board meeting. I am so excited to meet my investors and have them drill me about exactly what I'm going to be doing for the next quarter. There's all this other stuff that goes into building a company. And that's where 
they need someone horizontally to come in that is trusted, that comes in with the right type of attitude, with the right type of motives. And that person that goes horizontally, that's you. That's the investor. But boy, is that a sacred responsibility. And at Coffin Fellows, we view that as a very sacred responsibility. Our job is to walk into the room and have the entrepreneur's anxiety level actually lower. When the reality is, most time investors walk in the room, the entrepreneur's anxiety level goes through the roof. Our job is to make it lower. So that's what we do at Coffin Fellows. At Coffin Fellows, we care very deeply about the relationship between the investor and the entrepreneur and how that manifests itself over a long period of time. Over years and years and years of being in the arena with that entrepreneur, helping them through the, the day-to-day grind and struggles that they go through. And so a little bit about Coffin Fellows. Our job is we identify, screen, and accelerate global leaders to become the best versions of themselves so they can become the best investors. And we do this by saying, you know what? If you're in this room and you're in venture capital, you're likely within the top 5% of performers in the world. You're probably within the top 5% of the most blessed people in the world. I mean, think about that for a second. We get paid to do what we do. We get paid to sit in here. We get paid to go work with entrepreneurs and learn from some of the smartest, most driven people in the world. That is an incredible opportunity. But we say, you know what? That's not good enough. To support these entrepreneurs, you have to be the absolute best version of yourself. In fact, if you find yourself, one of our uh, faculty members said this, he said, if you find yourself having a bad day, go home. Because guess what? A bad day can ruin the work of a thousand good days. We expect the top 1% from our investors in Coffin Fellows. And we do that by saying, there's four things that we think they need to focus on to support the entrepreneurs that they serve. Number one is they need to have radical self-belief and a willingness to bet on themselves. They need to invest because of conviction, not because of consensus or FOMO or because they read something on somebody else's blog. We need to invest because of our own convictions. Because guess what? Guess who else has conviction? The entrepreneur you're investing in. So you need to have conviction around them. The second thing that you need to have is a novel investment thesis that maps to your convictions. And you're, by the way, your thesis should not be, I'm going to invest in everything that that, other, that that other firm invests in. That's not your investment thesis. That's theirs. Number three is we believe that uh, the best investors in the world have a strong personal brand. Now, we define personal brand not as how many Twitter followers you have, but instead, we define it as what is the promise of the experience in interacting with you as an, as, as an investor. Because guess what? Your personal brand is being built every single day by every single interaction you have, whether you like it or not. That is your personal brand. And then number four is the fact that we believe that this business is really less about the technical dynamics and more about the behavioral dynamics or human dynamics. That's why we call our program a behavioral fitness program. So as we think about this, we say the best investors in the world are going to be the ones that are behavioral, behaviorally fit and then understand our role as a supporter of these entrepreneurs that are building great businesses anywhere in the world because this is a global industry. Because really, our business is pretty simple. It's, can you pick the right deal or did you pick the wrong deal? And you do the deal that everybody's doing or the deal that nobody's doing? Well, if you do the wrong deal, <laughs> you're hosed anyway. If you do the right deal that everybody's doing, maybe 2x. Do the right deal that nobody's doing? That's what your LPs are paying you for. But that takes conviction. That takes uh, a, an investment thesis that maps to that conviction. That takes a strong personal brand, meaning you show up the way that you want to in that top 1% of your ability every single day. And it, it means that you are behaviorally fit in the way that you support those entrepreneurs. One more thing about diversity. <coughs> So Coffin Fellows was founded on the principles of uh, diversity in this business. In fact, one of the key tenets of starting the Coffin Fellows program was the fact that when they looked at the venture industry in 1995, they saw that it was a very homogeneous group of individuals. Insert laughter. Um, and they said, that does not map to the entrepreneurial ecosystems that we see. Entrepreneurs are very diverse in age 
in gender, in ethnicity, in geography, in sector, stage. So the, the mission was to build a cadre of leaders that better represent entrepreneurial ecosystems and society as a whole. Been doing that for 23 years and we believe very deeply in it today. In fact, it's, it's, we believe that trust plus diversity equals better outcomes. And look, we know the stats. The stats are frankly horrific in our industry. It lacks diversity. Part of why you're here today is, is, is to talk about exactly those things, how we need to support greater diversity. And so Coffin Fellows, we think about this deeply. We say that you know, our goal, uh, we look at the industry numbers, we look at our numbers, we look at uh, the, the numbers from the most recent class, and we, see what, we say, what impact can we have on the industry through our small uh, things that we're doing in Coffin Fellows? This is something that you should be thinking about. If you're not already thinking about it, you're losing. This has to be a part of what you think about in the entrepreneurs that you invest in, in the teams that you build, both within your venture team and also with the entrepreneurs you serve. This has to be something that you uh, pay deep attention to. So look, the greatest problems in the world will be solved by talented, driven, diverse, visionary entrepreneurs and the visionary investors like you who will fuel that innovation. It is the people in this room that will go back out to their ecosystems and fuel this innovation. Go do it the right way. Go be the best version of yourselves. Thank you.